as we do this observation lab, all you will need is something to write with and your observation lab paper. What I'm going to do is tell you a story about a science class that I was once in. And as I tell you the story, I'm going to be doing certain actions. I want you to listen to my story and write down observations of the actions you see me doing. So you don't have to write down the story. Write down careful observations about my actions, the things you see me doing. And be as careful as you can in my observations that you write down. So here we go. When I was in the eighth grade, I had a science teacher. And he taught us about astronomy. And one of the things he taught us about astronomy was about the planets. Particularly, I remember him saying that Saturn had three rings around it. Later on, he gave us a test. And on the test, one of the questions was, how many rings does Saturn have? So I wrote down, Saturn has three rings. Well, when I got the test back, he had marked that answer correct, that Saturn did indeed have three rings. Years later, we sent a spacecraft past Saturn, and it took pictures and sent them back. We found out that Saturn did not actually have three rings. It had over 500. And scientists reported that Saturn had over 500 rings. Later, a second spacecraft went past Saturn and found not 500 rings, but on a closer approach, found that it had over 1,500 rings. Now, interestingly, when I had gotten the question right, that Saturn had three rings, I was actually wrong. Saturn doesn't have three rings. What scientists should have said is, based on Earth-based observations using a telescope, it appears that Saturn has three rings. Later, it could have said, based on photographic evidence from a flyby, it appears that Saturn has at least 500 rings, not exactly 500. And now we could say that our photographs indicate that Saturn has at least 1,500 rings. So scientists had jumped to some conclusions. They had not made very careful observations and conclusions. So at this time, my story is now over. If you wish, you may pause the tape so that you can write down all the observations that you've seen, everything that you recall me doing. Go ahead and pause the video at this time. Now that you've done that, what I'd like you to do is share some of your observations with your teacher. What did you see me doing? For example, maybe you mentioned that I put on my lab coat. Maybe you mentioned that I buttoned my lab coat. But did I button it up from the bottom or down from the top? How carefully did you observe that action? You may have mentioned some of the things that I did here, that I took out a coffee cup and drank some coffee, that I took an empty cup and then poured water into it and lit a candle with a match extinguish the match in a beaker, that I shook a box of matches. Make sure you've written out as many observations as you can. And again, if you wish to pause the tape to do so, you may. Now that you've done that, I'd like you to write down a percent next to each observation. A 100% means I am absolutely 100% sure that this happened. A 0% means I'm absolutely sure it did not happen. A 50% of course means I don't know one way or another. And maybe an 80% means I'm pretty sure this happened. For example, you may have written down that I took a drink of coffee. But are you 100% sure this has coffee in it? Do you know if this cup has anything in it? You saw me shake a box of matches. Maybe you're 100% sure of that. So next to each observation, write down how sure you are of each one. Now that you've done that, I want you to really think carefully about this. For example, if you said that I took a drink of coffee, we're not 100% sure based on your observations that that is coffee or that there's anything in there at all. So you may wish to change some of your percentages. When I shook the box of matches, are you sure this is a box of matches? It says it's a box of matches, but could I put one match in here to light my candle and then filled it with something else? What else might make that noise? Could it be paper clips? Maybe some gravel? Toothpicks? 
Are you 100% sure that this is the box of matches? Take a minute now and go back through all of the observations and see if you want to change your percentages on any of those. Now that you've done that, I'd like you to share with your teacher any that you might have changed. For example, if you were 100% sure that I took a drink of coffee, and now you're only 60% sure I took a drink of coffee, share those observations and those measurements of the observations with your teacher. Now, are we 100% sure that that's water in that beaker? Are we 100% sure that that is an empty cup when I set it up here? What are the things we're absolutely sure about? For example, is there anything left on your paper that you're 100% sure of? Many of my students say, I'm 100% sure you poured some water into that cup and that it was empty when you started because it was laying on its side facing the camera and we could see that it was empty. Maybe though you're not 100% sure that's water, but perhaps you're 100% sure that I lit a candle and that there's some type of liquid in that cup now. So, what are the things that you're 100% sure of? Share those observations with your teacher at this time. Now that you've done that, I want you to go back and rethink this a third time. You're probably 100% sure that I poured a liquid into this cup. Maybe 100% sure that I lit the candle. 100% sure that I threw the match into this beaker. So you're 100% sure that I poured a liquid into this cup. And 100% sure that I lit this candle. Now go back through your observation list a third time. What are the things you're still 100% sure of in your observations? See, scientists have to be extremely careful with the observations they make and the conclusions they draw from those observations. Thank you.